What happens to the pitch of the horn when the bell is fully stopped with the right hand? This is a surprisingly confusing question. So confusing, in fact, that when I was taking the PPR and content exams to be a certified music teacher in Texas, these were the answer choices that were offered on the test. A, the pitch is raised by a half step. B, the pitch is lowered by a half step. C, the pitch does not change at all. And then D was some random answer that doesn't really make any sense. Now, if you're a horn player, you know that you can adjust the pitch with your right hand inside the bell. And generally, if you close your hand in the bell, you're gonna lower the pitch a little bit. So you might think the right answer is B. But the answer that they wanted and the answer that's commonly taught in music ed classrooms is A, it's going to raise the pitch. The logic goes something like this. As you are lowering the pitch of the horn, yes, it does bend the pitch down, but once you've fully closed the hole and stopped it with your hand, now the instrument is shorter, and when instruments are shorter, they raise in pitch. I have to admit, it sounds a little ridiculous saying it out loud, so let's do an experiment. Let's gradually close our hand inside of the bell of the horn until we are fully stopped. <laughs> So as you hopefully heard, the first interval went from a written C down to an A flat. The second interval went from a written E down to a C sharp, and the third interval went from a written horn G down to an F natural. So not only did it never suddenly raise in pitch, the lower that we were playing, the wider the interval we could bend was. So all the answer choices on that test weren't correct. There was no correct answer. It doesn't raise the pitch by a half step, it doesn't lower it by a half step consistently, and it very clearly does something. Ultimately, I think the rule is something like this. When you fully stop the horn, the pitch lowers to one half step above the partial below the starting note. For example, that first interval I demonstrated starting on C, the partial below that is G, and then the A flat was one half step above. However, if I use a different fingering for that C, like let's say F horn two and three, then now I'm on a different harmonic series and a different set of partials. If I fully stop the horn with this fingering, that C gets bent down to an A natural, which is one half step above the A flat partial below. <laughs> Using a stop mute and fingering one half step lower on the F horn is the best way to get consistent intonation and response. However, especially in the high register, you should experiment with and consider as many fingerings as possible even on the B flat horn. I'm really not trying to be confusing. I understand that this is a lot of technical minutia. Look, stopped horn is weird and the physics are confusing, but like with any technique, it takes some practice and some experimentation to figure out. All right, if you have any other questions about stopped horn or other weird techniques on the horn, leave them in the comments. And uh, maybe after we answer a few of them, we will start to figure out how in the world this instrument is supposed to work.